Funding for this program is made possible through a National Park Service certified local government grant to the City of Pueblo, and the grant is administered through History Colorado. Well, we have a lot of challenges. The EPA wants to come in here and make us a super fun site because of the Isle Smelter. The bricks that were used to build a school, right, came from the smelter. And uh, so they want to make us a super fun site, which is sort of where this play on words comes from, super fun neighborhood. Um, and uh, I-25, uh, the big highway right here, uh, has also been a challenge. They want to come this direction and take out 52 of our homes to uh, enlarge the highway. So we have a lot of these humongous government agencies that we've been uh, dealing with uh, to try to preserve our neighborhoods. So it's really been a challenge. I don't know. I just love this area here. It's mm -hmm. quiet. She goes for walks. And we know everybody from here, her over to there. It's kind of a close-knit community. I think if I go someplace else, I would feel lost. Pueblo's Bojan neighborhood was born in a catastrophe. The great 1921 flood devastated low-lying areas of the city, including the Grove neighborhood, home to many poor immigrants from Eastern and Southern Europe. My sister Kay and Rose lived, were still at home. They hadn't been married. And I was little. They took me down to the end of the hill there, mm -hmm. and we saw that water. I remember that. Then I remember my dad went to help clean out the church after the flood. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Following the flood, Pueblo Slovenians decided to move southward from the grove to the site of the long shuttered Colorado or Eilers smelter. Their neighborhood became known as Bojan Town, Bojan being a slang term for Slovenian dandy. My mom and her family. They lived in Leadville. They moved down here in 1920, 21, just in time to get flooded out. So they were no way going to stay down the grove. That's why we came up on this hill. The, the heritage from this neighborhood was about 75% of the neighborhood up through the 60s was Slovenian immigrant families. And uh, now it's a very mixed. An older, mixed older neighborhood and we're just in the process of, of trying to keep our neighborhood up. Bojan Town was not only higher, but also much closer to the Colorado Fuel and Iron Company's gigantic Miniqua Steelworks. CF&I was the lifeblood of Bojan Town, shaping every aspect of life in the neighborhood. Everybody basically worked out with CF&I, especially in this area. You know, they were close enough to walk. Dad decided he wasn't going to be a musician. He said, that's no life for a, ma a married man with children. And he saw an ad in the paper for Bessmer was, <laughs> it was, Miss Bessmer was hiring people for the mill. So they, that's how they came here. When I first went work out the mill, I worked for 80 cents an hour. I am making $6.40 for eight hours worth. And I thought I was a millionaire. And oh, the blast furnace put out that red dirt. And I remember my mother running out to get the clothes when she heard a, the blast go off. And half the time she had to do them over. While CF and I may have been Bojan Town's economic center, its spiritual and cultural heart was St. Mary, Help of Christians Church. We, we went to school, we made our confirmation communion, and got married at St. Mary's Church. All of us, every one of us. At Christmas time, you used to see three generations there. 
It was lovely to see mm -hmm. grandma, the great grandma would be there, and you know, and the kids. We take chicken to yeah, church. Sick. Whatever we have for Easter, we cook food, put it in a basket, and at 12 o'clock on Saturday afternoon, the bishop usually comes and blesses the food. That's been a tradition at St. Mary's. Yet no church event was as widely celebrated and remembered in the neighborhood as the traditional Slovenian wedding. The man that played the accordion, he went and picked up the groom and played the accordion and took him to church. That's well, that's awesome. the way they did it. You got married at 8 o'clock in the morning, and then you went down to the hall and had breakfast. Mm -hmm. Then you stood around there, and then you pretty soon you were eating lunch. <laughs> then you was eating supper, mm -hmm. dinner, whatever you want to call it. I had my, I had my dress on, my wedding dress, beautiful wedding dress, and um, I had it on eight, for 8 o'clock mass. We got married till the uh, reception was over at 1. Midnight. No, it lasted until 1. In addition to caring for souls, St. Mary's also cared for minds, operating an elementary school beside the church from 1923 until 1971. It was the proverbial melting pot, helping the children of Slovenian immigrants learn English as well as American culture. All of us, the kids will all get together, you know, we all went to school. Everybody around here basically went to St. Mary's School. Our tuition was like a dollar a month. And then when we were in the fourth grade, they doubled it to two. Well, we had sisters, and I remember they were wonderful. One was kind of mean, but the rest of them were good. I remember over there, we never had lights in the school. Couldn't for a dollar. And they had those big windows, and they were pretty, they had quite a bit of light in them. And if there was a real bad thunderstorm or something, we got to turn the lights on. For children, Bojan Town was a veritable wonderland filled with homemade games. But what I remember is, as growing up as a boy, just kind of playing those, those kind of games. I like we had to make our own neighborhood kids. We'd get together and we'd, we'd create a game we call Corks. And so from the bar, we got the corks and then we took broomstick handles and used the corks as balls and the broomstick candles as the bats. And residents, young and old, were particularly fond of the national pastime. But baseball was very important in the neighborhood. And in 1933, there was a semi-pro team that was put together. My dad was the manager, and he got the guys from the neighborhood. They were all, all the ball players were from the neighborhood because everybody played ball anyway. And there was a local brewery in town called Walter's Brewery. And my dad put the team together with all the local guys, and they ended up building a baseball field across the street from the bar. It was, there was a fence all around this uh, base. Where it was a, there was a grandstand on that end of the field. They used to have tournaments over there every weekend. Zulu Giants. <laughs> they played in grass skirts and barefooted, and they had a bone sticking out like under their nose. And they used to walk all the way through the neighborhood. And when we'd see them, we would scatter, because we were scared to death of them. Eiler's Place Bar is a beloved Bojan town institution, holding Pueblo's second oldest liquor license. My dad was a barber, and he said, I'm going to take a walk around the block. So he took a walk around the block, and he noticed the grocery store. Eiler's Bar was a grocery store. He went to people in the, the grocery store. He said, I want to buy this uh, house. And he bought the house. One year later, he died. So my mother was lost. They had six children. Right after that, he passed away. She was by herself. So what happened was the gentleman right down the street here on the corner he came down to the grocery store with two big barrels and a door and put them on top and said, took her down to City Hall and got her her liquor license to open a bar. And it's still Eiler's Bar today. It's going to be 80 years old. We were the third generation to run it. Now Sue and her brother, who were raised right next door, are the fourth generation. 
uh, what I recognized in the bar and in this neighborhood in general is this really is, uh, it pulls people back. It makes people think because the memories were so great from people growing up here. They still want to talk about them. They still want to share them. No celebration was complete in Bojan Town without traditional Slovenian music, most often played on the accordion or button box. Well, I can remember when I was real young, there was somebody playing a button box accordion on that side of town. One guy would play it for a couple hours, he'd put it down, somebody else would pick. There was about six or seven guys playing accordions down there. I had to play the accordion. Oh, I hated it. I just hated it because every time we went anywhere, you know, my cousin and I, we had to bring our accordion. I'm always waiting there until we got to play it. And then we both play as fast as we could. But it was the food that tied generations together. Kabasi is a local sausage. They also make liver and blood sausage. Still made here in this neighborhood today. We're also going to have sour potatoes, which is another Slovenian uh, dish. And we're also going to have Apostle. Sausage, yetenets, sausage, the, the rice ones, the blood sausage. Kidneys and gravy and sauerkraut and uh, sausage. I made sauerkraut from the time I was eight years old till I was 70. And tisa and strudel and krofa and what else? Kvasa, <laughs> bambir, bazile. Well, they made pizza, like everybody. And pizza is a rolled dough with walnuts spread on a table. Their dough is so perfect, it is about this thin, and every layer is perfect. Pueblo's Bojan Town is at heart a place of stories and memories, but it is also a real place, where families work hard to achieve the American dream, to live strong, faithful lives, and together make this corner of Pueblo a better place to live. <laughs>